In the previous course, we created projects as lists. We also created a project intake list to capture all requests and triage them. And once the requests were approved, we created a new list for the work. Picking up where we left off, it's important to set up and customize your projects in the way that works best for you and your team. ClickUp provides you with the flexibility to work the way you want with custom statuses and custom fields. In this video, let's talk through some best practices associated with statuses and custom fields. Statuses typically represent stages or phases that a task will go through all the way through to completion. You can easily customize this to fit your needs. To get to your list statuses, go to list settings. From here, you can choose to inherit the statuses from your space, or you can use custom statuses. If you have specific custom statuses in mind, that's great. Go ahead and update them here. Otherwise, as you're thinking through which statuses should go towards your projects, it's important to keep a few best practices in mind. First, keep your statuses as simple and clear as possible. You want each status to be crystal clear to your team whenever they're progressing through their work. Next, keep your status list clean here and use less statuses to convey the true status of the work. Third, limit the number of people on your team who can edit these statuses and try to lock down the ability to edit statuses in your projects. And last, use statuses to clearly and simply track the steps of your workflow and the progress of your workflow and use custom fields to provide more context for your processes. For example, if one of your tasks is currently in progress, such as a blog or other content, however, you're still in the research phase, use the statuses simply for in progress and then use a drop down custom field for the more complex information, such as the phase of the development lifecycle. So if a blog is still in the research phase, keep the status in progress and change the custom field to research. In the status manager here, you can add statuses to each status group as you see fit. However, as mentioned previously, it's best to reduce this to only what is necessary to display the current stage or phase of your task. Also, if you have similar types of work that your team performs regularly, consider saving your statuses as a template so you can quickly apply and reuse them later. When you go back to your list, you'll find the new set of statuses that can be selected. Great, you're all set with statuses and how your tasks will go through a workflow. Let's talk about custom fields next. Custom fields are unique data points that allow you to add complexity and extra context to your tasks. There are a lot of different custom field types available. Dropdown, checkbox, number, label, and even formula calculations are some of the most common custom fields that you'll find. And each type of custom field serves different purposes that are tailored to complement your workflow. Let's create a dropdown here and show you how to push complexity to your custom fields. Let's say this is a blog series project and we need to classify the type of blog that's being created so we can provide visibility to management on this initiative. Just select the dropdown option and fill out all the details. You can even add color to the options to make them stand out even more. Go ahead and add the dropdown and it'll now appear in your view. When you select a value here, the value will now be associated with the task. Okay, so now that you know what custom fields are and how to create them and use them in your projects, let's discuss some best practices for custom fields. First, be intentional where you place them and the location that they are in. Try to create or add custom fields in context with your work. If you have them at a list level, that's great. However, be mindful of the hierarchy and how custom fields can be inherited from the above levels, such as folders or spaces. Specifically, be very careful not to add anything to the everything or the workspace level unless it's absolutely necessary, because it'll appear for all tasks in all locations, which will result in clutter and confusion in your workspace. Next, similar to statuses, consider limiting access to who can create or edit custom fields. Lock them down across your teams to prevent anyone from adding unnecessary 
or duplicate custom fields or removing important custom fields. If you do this, this will actually help you reduce clutter. Also, review what custom fields work best for you and try to use them wisely and sparingly to capture the information you need. Try to start small. Select only what you need. Because there's so many options, it can really become overwhelming to manage if too many custom fields are added. The last best practice is to check other locations as needed first and see if the custom field already exists in the workspace. You can add the custom field to your location. And similar to the last point, you want to prevent duplication of custom fields so there's less management that needs to be done on the back end. Great, now your projects are set up and customized to fit your needs and your workflows. Next, let's talk about how to organize your work with views.